So uh, many projects had improvements. Some of them are more important than others. And this is just my opinion of what I think is, is very important. So um, I think IPv6 is now completely usable in Neutron, as well as uh, uh, QoS, which was kind of incubating a year ago. Uh, now we have DNS support through Designate. So when you create some uh, uh, IPs, it can be associate, associated with DNS. Uh, there's also some general improvement with OVS and uh, such. Uh, Nova got more drivers, and one very important bit is that previously you had the choice of implementing cells or not cells. So a cell is a group of physical nodes that you can set up together, and then you'd have more than one Nova API that you will uh, install in that cell. That way you can scale to a larger subset of uh, compute nodes. So now in Nova, uh, the, you have no choice. You have to do a one cell uh, deployment. And this is what, what cell, cell v2 are, are about. So uh, there's more U, UEFI support and a new disk scheduler that will check disk space before selecting where, where your VM will be spawned. Uh, so uh, cellometer is the thing that provides a metering on your deployment. It has been split into two smaller um, projects, AODH, which, AODH, which is uh, some Irish vocabulary, <laughs> is for alerting, and Yoki takes care of the uh, time uh, uh, database. Uh, so Keystone has now fully uh, migrated to OpenStack clients, so you don't have a Keystone uh, command line anymore. You just use OpenStack and all the identity subcommands. Uh, there's some other, so like the admin auth token is supposed to be gone, and now you, you are using a DB bootstrap, which is what the package is already doing. Uh, Cinder got Nested code are non-distributive backups so that you don't need to shut down the VM before we're doing a backup. Uh, there's uh, more general improvements. Ma many vendors have, have been pushing uh, new drivers into the Cinder code base over the last year. And yeah, one very important thing is uh, rolling upgrades, meaning that you can have an always up Cinder service and you can upgrade it from one version of OpenStack to the next. So um, many projects are slowly moving to that. It takes a long time, but we already have uh, Nova and Tinder doing so. And, and, and other projects like HIT are, are also catching up. So uh, there's new Cassandra support in Trove. Um, well, another important bit is that Horizon used to carry lots of uh, plugins by itself. Now they got out of tree and separated out of tree. So, uh, and so in Debian, uh, last year I told you about Barbican Congress and Mistral, which I was working on for the packaging. I'm very happy to announce you here that uh, since a year ago, we have uh, Barbican, so Barbican does uh, secret as a service. So basically what it does is that it keeps your uh, private key and, and it can generate uh, SSL certificates for your deployment and such. Uh, I was able to package Congress because now there is NLAR uh, 3.5 in, in SID, so that could be done. Um, and so another interesting project, which I think is worth looking at, is Watcher. So it's been uh, created by, partly by some uh, uh, public cloud providers. What it does is that it can shut down some compute nodes if, you're not, if, you're not used, if you don't use them enough. So like it will, it will migrate your VM workload to another compute node and then shut down the machine. So that brings us to 22 services, which are now packaged into Debian. Uh, Debian is the only operating system that contains 
as many uh, services. Other distributions don't have, for example, uh, Sendin, Zakar, Watcher, which are new projects. Uh, and when these aren't available in, in Ubuntu, Ubuntu syncs directly from Debian. So you will see some of them, but uh, probably they're not fully up to date in, in Ubuntu. So um, maybe you were, if you were present to the Python buff earlier this week, you've noticed that we are pushing for getting rid of Python 2. This is something that upstream is very aware of. And a lot of work has been done, especially by uh, Victor Stinner, on porting all of OpenStack to Python 3. Uh, and currently, we are at a stage where all the 19 Oslo libraries, the four development libraries, the 22 clients, and uh, six uh, cross-project libraries, plus the 29 services, have all been ported to Python 3. Uh, when we say ported to Python 3, it means that all unit tests are passing. Remaining is Nova, which is ported 72% to Python 3. Uh, about one quarter of the code base is still not uh, fully working in, in Python 3, especially some unit tests. And unfortunately, Swift is uh, really lagging behind and not accepting Python 3 contribution fast enough. Uh, hopefully, it is going to be to improve slowly. And uh, another thing that is currently blocking is that we don't have functional testing of uh, using Python 3. So until that uh, happens, uh, I don't think it's reasonable to have uh, Debian packages of OpenStack in uh, running Python 3. Yeah, go ahead. What's blocking your functional testing on client? Yes, so I repeat the question. He, he's asking what's blocking functional testing. Uh, so this functional testing is a special test suite, which uh, also is written in Python. And this also has to be ported into Python 3. So there's DevStack that has been ported to Python 3, but not, uh, not Tempest fully. And anyway, since Nova is not ported to Python 3, it doesn't make a lot of sense to right now start, start gating on, on functional testing using Python 3. So uh, with regard to Debian, uh, I kind of uh, followed all what Upstream was doing. And I'm very proud to tell that right now, all, all the client libraries are and Oslo libraries are also supported with Python 3 and Debian, meaning that if you want to use the, an OpenStack deployment right now, you can write your code using Python 3 and the client li libs. But uh, no services are currently running under Python 3 by default because I don't think it's reasonable to do so until I can also test it myself using functional tests. Uh, so the general plan for Python 3 support in Debian for the, these services is to first, uh, as I've been doing for the client libraries, have every binary in user bin to uh, have Python 3-something and Python 2-something be installed in your system, and then using the post inst, just select one of the two using update alternatives. When, once this is, will be done, I'll be able to uh, activate Python 3 functional testing uh, by selecting the Python 3 alternative instead of the Python 2, and then test on that. So I hope that, therefore, I'll be able to switch slowly to Python 3 without having anything that breaks for Python 2 users. Uh, so uh, hopefully we'll get there uh, for in a year of time. That, that's what has been said in the mailing list. And uh, so after the stretch is released, I think I'm going to uh, switch services and demons so that they use Py3. So now. Um, Every six months, there's a user survey that, that uh, is going on in the OpenStack community. And I think there's a few things that we can learn from the Debian perspective, uh, which, is, um, which I, I try to sum up here. So uh, many of the cloud users are using PHP 
seemingly, with LAMPStacks or Java, but mostly PHP. So it's, it's very important for the cloud that we have these running correctly. Uh, mostly OpenStack is, is used on-premise, meaning that the companies set that up in their own environment. This is mostly what we get also from my company. Um, so Virantis um, sells like uh, has 70% of the global market share for doing OpenStack consulting into big companies. And uh, mostly they all, most of our customers, is, if not all, are deploying in their own uh, data centers. Um, a lot of people are using Puppet and, and after Ansible and after Fuel. So Fuel, uh, we were very happy to see these numbers. The Fuel is, the, is a web GUI that Mirantis has created to deploy uh, OpenStack. Uh, it came from the seventh position to the third, so that, that's very nice for us. So because everybody is using Puppet, I also package Puppet in, in Debian. So currently in Seed, you can see OpenStack Mitaka Puppet modules so that you can use them. And also uh, Puppet is now fully working with Debian, which was not the case a year ago. Uh, there was some problems because of differences between Ubuntu and Debian, which have been fixed in the Puppet manifest. A uh, lot of users are using Ceph, which is also not very surprising. This haven't changed over the years. So Ceph does uh, block storage mainly for OpenStack. Uh, so uh, on this slide, you see how, what, what the running systems are uh, users are running. So uh, Debian is only three percent, but you. With these numbers, you have to realize that uh, Mirantis is using Ubuntu Server as a base OS on which they run uh, the packages which I created in Debian over on top of Ubuntu. So uh, finally, as a set of uh, Debian users of the OpenStack packages, it would be a lot more. Uh, and Users are having a variety of scales of deployments from very small, uh, less than 10 nodes uh, deployments to uh, more than 1,000. It's spread evenly. So uh, one big evolution. So if, if you saw there, the, the dark blue was uh, production people and the very light blue was like proof of concept. Over this last year, we've seen a lot of people that went from Proof of concept deployments to production, so that's a very good thing. And it's looking like uh, Debian doesn't have an as good image as it could have into in, for OpenStack users. Mostly, still continue to use uh, Ubuntu and don't con don't even consider Debian. So there's some progress that needs to happen there. Uh, so that's about it I, for uh, OpenStack itself. It's uh, ecosystem and search. And now I have a proposal for the Debian infrastructure, which I think is interesting for every disease. Uh, so for, in order for you to understand this proposal, you've got to understand how patches are done in, in upstream OpenStack. So uh, first you clone a repository. Uh, then you modify it and commit it as usual, and then you do a git push to get it. And when it's pushed, then uh, the review system takes it, and what happens from there? What happens from there is that there's a bunch of tested, that tests that are normally happening for Python code, but again, that can also apply for uh, doing Debian packages. So I've been trying to push for doing OpenStack packaging on uh, directly on op OpenStack infrastructure, meaning that uh, building packages happens there and all the checks happens there. Um, so Zool is the uh, job scheduler. It will pick up the new uh, patch proposal. And then it's going to transmit that to a node pool, which will pick up a Debian uh, machine, a Debian virtual machine that is running. On that VM, the build will happen. 
using SBuild, so SBuild is previously installed, but like if you were doing that inside the Debian infrastructure, we could have that already pre-set up in the image. And then the package is built, and then feedback is, is given on the GUI or using anchors GTTY if that is what you use. On top of just building the package, we could add few parts, adequate, check all the things, and such, so that we would make sure that uh, a proposed patch for a package would be in a good shape. At what stage in that process do you run any of the unit tests for that package or packages that might be affected by the, the change you've made? Yeah, so currently, uh, I'm not up to that stage yet. Currently, it's a little bit experimental. Uh, though, uh, what it does is just build a package which contains unit tests by itself. So is okay. that, right, so, so the in-build tests, are they the full set of tests available for that package, or do you have a second set that are more intrusive or need more support, more hardware support or so I, software support? After I have built all the packages, there's functional testing that happens. Uh, but no, I'm not yet uh, checking uh, uh, reverse dependencies and such. That's something that could happen if we were setting the same kind of infrastructure in Debian, I believe. And that's really something that I would see, uh, I would enjoy to see happen. So uh, once all the packages are built for a given release of OpenStack, uh, I have a job that. Uh, installs everything in an all-in-one machine. Once everything is installed, so that's the first test as well, because I make sure OpenStack is still installable. And then functional tests are, are on the work, so it, it really spawns VMs, uh, create networks, and such. So once all that is successfully run, it takes the, the unofficial backports uh, repositories that Jenkins has created, and moves that to a second stage repository, which is marked as dash, dash tested. So effectively, right now, you can use uh, the latest version of the packages that I created and still make sure, and you are sure that they can be installed and they, they work. Have they been merged into the, into the branch at that point, or are they still patches in Garrett? When does the, when does the actual plus two from Garrett and the yeah, merge so of the branch happen? Just right after. So. Uh, so once once this is all all uh, run, okay, okay, you have a review process that happens. Uh, so anyone can review the patch. A patch a patch can depend on another one. So let's say uh, yeah. from the Debian perspective. But you're, uh, you're building packages that are, are, they, are they packages or are they um, artifacts? So you're building in the previous slide before people can. So currently, this is the, the depends on only happens on. Uh, uh, more general Python jobs, yeah. but it can be applied to packaging as well. Okay? Yeah. So uh, only the core reviewers can, can plus to a patch, like usual, and uh, once the patch is approved, automatic uh, merge happens with a check job, and uh, the package is rebuilt once more to make sure and nothing is broken between uh, uh, reviewing the patch and, and uh, the, when it's merged. And the build files are pushed onto tables at openstack.org and hopefully soon pick up by a, by a job that uh, push them into a Debian repository. So uh, all of that happens in, inside the OpenStack infrastructure. What I would like to see happen is having all of that also available for every Debian developers. The idea would be to interface that with dgate so that we would be able to, to take any package from the Debian archive, just dgate it, and then uh, push that for a review. So what, what we could do is having a kind of uh, a wrapper around dgate that it would get any package and then add artificially add a dot get review file so that it would push it to a, I don't know, a review.debian.org or .net and then apply all of that. So uh, to run this test, we would need uh, to have something called Parable that we have upstream. 
There's a few ways where uh, to do that. So we could set up an OpenStack infrastructure in, inside the DSA uh, the data centers. There's been talks about that already. Uh, there's some new uh, gears that are coming to UBC, so probably there's going to be an OpenStack deployment somehow happening on, in, in DSA. Uh, and that, that deployment will maybe have other kind of use than just doing the packaging the way I described. Uh, so that, that implies setting up, uh, or, or we could use third party donated infrastructures like they do in uh, OpenStack Infra. So um, they, they use uh, compute power from Rackspace, OVH, used to be HP, but it's not HP anymore, uh, and, and some others. Do you have other names in, in mind? Yeah, there's Blue, Blue Box, uh, Blue, Blue Host, and such. So that's very nice to do that because we, we like that we have uh, many uh, pools of providers so that we don't need to take care of redundancy by ourselves. Are these a single architecture then? Are these all AMD64 or are you looking at multiple architectures? It's only AMD64. Um, though uh, we could we could have the narrow cloud join the pool. So so these are these are not donated hardware. They're actually donated public cloud compute time. Um, so that kind of abstracts away from from the hardware. So I can't actually tell you exactly, but I would bet that pretty much all of it is AMD sixty four. Yeah, I think they are. Then there may be some uh, three i three eighty six. I'm not even sure. Maybe, but I doubt it anymore. Yeah. I have a question from IRC. So, uh, yeah? Uh, what do you think about the purpose of SAC in DC14, of work in the free service concept inside the Debian pro project due to cloud computing services, implications for freedom of users about the power of the big companies to increment SaaS? I didn't get it. Can you rephrase it with your own words? I don't know. Not really. Can okay. you maybe read it on IRC yourself? I th I suspect this is was uh, Stefano Zaccaroli's talk yes. at DC14. Yes. And yeah, so of uh, one of the motivations I have for doing OpenStack packaging is because I refuse to give uh, uh, to, that we only rely on things like AWS. When I hear that uh, uh, Debian is using AWS, I'm happy that they are providing us compute power, but uh, I don't know that we are dependent on some such uh, non-free software. It's even worse than non-free software, right? It's non-free service, which we don't even have access to. We, we can't r run, we, we couldn't run AWS even if we had the, the binaries of them. So uh, anywhere, whatever happens, if we use our own infrastructure or a third party resource, we would have to set up Zool, Gearman, and Notepool, and Garrett in some, in some, somewhere, probably in UBC. So I, I have a question, which is, I, I like the idea of automated CI CD on Debian packages, but I'm not really sure we need Garrett. That's a very culture specific So I don't way. mind if it's Garrett or GitLab. There's been a lot of talks about using GitLab in the Debian infrastructure. As long as we can hook uh, Zul German and Notepool to it, then I'm fine with whatever code review software we use. Uh, I know that DSA is not uh, so much against setting up Garrett. I just know Garrett. I don't know uh, any other review software. I think setting up um, Garrett or GitLab with uh, DGIT is a super awesome idea. It would make contributing to Debian very easy, especially if it's their Garrett with the Git review file. Anyone can just clone any, any package and send the patch super easily. It's super hard to send a patch right now because you have to know, like, yeah. you have to send patches by, by email, which people don't do ever anymore. So they are, like, not used to contributing things to Debian. And now just cloning and Git review, you have a patch. It's really good. So all of that, uh, we have already, like, I mean, the, 
All the technology is already there, uh, like Zool, Gamma, Notepool, Garrett. I have scripts to build on upstream infra, so we can reuse that. The only thing that would need a bit of glue would be uh, dgate, uh, whatever code review software we use, and uh, making it uh, so that whatever you set as uploader or maintainer field has the core review rights into that code review software. So once we have that, we could have anyone from anywhere in the world propose a patch, have it for review, having anyone to review it, and just the maintainer of the package having the rights to approve the package. Ultimately, if we trust that infrastructure enough, we could even have that infrastructure to upload directly to DAC if the FTP masters agree to it, which I'm not sure they will. But yeah, we could, we could do that. I would, I would trust better, more an infrastructure to set up as build with a clean CH shoot and such than any random, random DD to just build it in his laptop, maybe polluted with all the software. But that's just me for the moment. <laughs> maybe, maybe this kind of thinking will uh, slowly spread in Debian. I don't know. One of the problems I see with this is um, the question of what you're doing is you're adding your sort of hash files, but actually a lot of the activity here, and particularly uh, the, 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 the test results, could actually go on with the upstream. So you need the upstream maintainer there as the link from Debian to upstream to get that into the next upstream release. So it's more important than just sitting in the system there. Yes, but here you're talking about. Uh, an upstream patch. When I was saying a patch, the, may, maybe I didn't express it correctly. I mean, any any package, packaging modification for me is a patch as well. Okay, let's say you edit uh, the sh short description of a package. That's a patch too. It can go through the patch review process. Yeah. So if it's a packaging uh, patch, that's 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 fine. That goes yeah. that. But it's not it's not going to be clear from this kind of system that you're limiting. Uh, the support to the Debian directory. Because there's nothing in here that actually requires such a limitation that it would be, be, be potentially seen as um, artificial if you did put that limitation in. So you definitely need the link to upstream via the maintainer um, because you need to make sure this actually does get upstream, otherwise we end up mm -hmm. with these uh, loads and loads of patches that aren't going anywhere. Um, that's that's a that would be a, a backward step, so it needs to be looked at on on how we get this uh, get these these properly up, uh, integrated. Okay. Uh, so I think that that's it. We, we already started Q and A. If there's more, I'm happy to answer your questions. So, so he asks that you can read it directly on IRC. Yes. Okay. I can try. We have enough time. Uh, I'm not sure I can even start IRC with this resolution. What's what's the channel? Debcon sixteen dash ten. Yes, can you window up? Ah, okay, thank you. Okay, have the back lab. You can scroll up if you want. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I'm largely not really opinion. So the question is what do you think about the purpose? of work in the free service concept due to the 
cloud computing service implications are for freedom of users and the power of big companies to increment software as a service. So I'm not very much, uh, I'm, I'm not more opinionated than others about software as a service. I also think it's a very evil thing to provide software. What I'm fighting for here is to have infrastructure as a service, which is the foundation in order to build software as a service on top. I very much would like uh, software as a service to also be a, a free software, uh, like running things like own cloud and such. But uh, yeah, I, I think first, first thing first, let's build infrastructure as a service and then consider software as a service. There's not enough of this available, probably. OK, uh, the other question. So, so a reply to that one. Uh, All right. Um, a re reply to that one is a lot of the conversation about freedom and cloud is making the assumption that cloud is a public cloud where someone else owns the hardware and someone else owns the software, and the software is all proprietary, and you have given up all control. So cloud is really just a level of abstraction in infrastructure, and if it's all free software, all the way down, the infrastructure is free software, the application is free software, and it's running on your own hardware, then that makes it no different than any other uh, more traditional free software application running on a server. Um, and that's the big difference in terms of freedom. So don't, don't assume that cloud means AWS and you'll have a much better understanding of what OpenStack especially is trying to get at, yeah. is making it cloud but free software all the way down to the very bottom uh, and still respecting your freedom. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? No, 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 there's only one. He repeated one question multiple times. OK, then I think we're up for the conference dinner then. <laughs> Thank you.